Hello everyone, Dr. Nitin here. Thank you for joining in. We have a large audience today. I hope to help all of you utilize Teams in a more effective and efficient manner. So let's get started. Many of you already know me, but for those who are new, just a quick introduction. I'm not going to read it out. Just a quick slide. As you know, we are going to do this for 15 minutes of one way session and then we will take questions. You can add questions by going to this icon on top. And if the question is about a particular slide, please mention the slide number. So this is overall what we are going to cover, not necessarily in that order, but this is what we'll cover today. Now, before we go into Teams, I'm sure you have been using these components by virtue of different products across time. These products have been there at different time frames, and all of us have done chat, all of us have done VC. We do meetings all the time. Live streaming, probably everyone has not, but it is becoming more and more popular nowadays. For example, today's session, which I'm doing, is a live stream using Teams. So why am I showing you all these products? Because as you know, each category has different set of products. Some products may overlap across categories, but you will notice that depending on what you intend to do, you have to choose one of the products from that category. Nothing new there. What is new is all these categories are now covered by a single product called Teams. So one of the commonest mistakes people do when they are evaluating teams and thinking, should I use it? Should I not use it? Is they compare teams with one of the products from one of those six slots, forgetting the fact that it also does five other things. And even more importantly, teams doesn't work alone. It's a part of a platform. And in fact, that is the platform we have been covering, Office 365. Teams is just one of the products and obviously it integrates with everything else. So now with that in mind, let's look at some common sense based decisions. Let's say I want to do type of work ad hoc. There is no long term thing. I just want something from someone. Then I have to think, is it urgent or not urgent? Now again, another thing I have to think is, is it one person involved or more than one person involved? So in either case, you choose the tool. Nobody taught us this. We just did it by trial and error and most of us get it right. So if it's not urgent, you send a mail, wait for the reply. It may never arrive, but that's OK. It's not urgent. If it is urgent, obviously use a chat. And if it's urgent, multiple people, then we use a group chat. Nothing great there. Now all these things, chat can be done in Teams as well. I'm sure you know that. Now what is special about Teams chat? If it is urgent work, you may need just text or you may need audio, video, screen. All of those are available and this is nothing special. All kinds of chat software by and large gives all this, but there are some nuances which you should know about. For example, if someone tells you on WhatsApp or Zoom, go ahead and give that customer 20% discount. Let's say your boss told you that on WhatsApp or Zoom, are you going to go ahead? You're not. You're going to tell the boss, send me a mail. Because mail is legal evidence, whereas chat is not legal evidence. And that's the difference. Teams chat is legal evidence because exactly like email, it is archived. And how long it is kept archived depends on the regulation in the country. It is useful for governance, e-discovery, all that. Now, Another thing which Teams chat does is files which we send on chat are stored on OneDrive. We get full formatting. Most of the chat software gives you very minimal kind of formatting. Here you even get heading one, heading two, heading three if required. Now what else? There is most of us, whatever chat we use, if we use a lot of groups, we mute them because it's irritating. Here we have an option called urgent because it's corporate chat, there may be a genuine emergency and everyone has muted chat. Nobody is going to get the notification. So there is an urgent 
notification. It comes in that. Exclamation mark. Don't misuse it, then people will stop responding to you, but this is a good feature. So bottom line, although chat is chat, it's designed more for corporate governance based chat rather than personal chat. By all means, you can use whichever depending on the context. I mentioned that files which are shared on Teams chat automatically go to OneDrive and we saw in an earlier session all these benefits of OneDrive automatically accrue because you shared the file on Teams chat. No other chat will give you all these benefits because there is no integrated cloud. File system behind it. Now, not only that, there are some unique things which Teams chat allows. For example, you can not just share photo, but you can share a full fledged PowerPoint presentation from a mobile. Not only that, you can even share screen from a mobile. So very often if you are a presenter. In no other software can you be purely on a mobile phone and manage the show here you can. One of the features which is fairly small in terms of functionality, but very popular in teams is because it's a corporate application. It understands Active Directory and Active Directory typically has the manager field populated, so it gives you a nice org chart. So you search for anyone's name, hover on the org chart icon, and it will give you all the bosses as well as all the subordinates, and this is interactive. You click on any name, it'll do the same thing. So in large organizations, it's a very good way to find out whom to talk to or just to get to know the hierarchy. Some people in the chat window or the question answer have already said we want to compare. So by all means you can use WhatsApp for personal use, but don't use it for corporate reasons because whichever country you're from, there is some kind of privacy and data protection law. And the idea is if customer data is lost, then 4% of your global turnover is typically the penalty. The company will pay the penalty, but obviously if data was leaked, because of your WhatsApp usage, someone is going to notice that and you are also legally liable somewhere. So remember the richest person in the world was hacked using WhatsApp. So obviously when it comes to data, don't take chances. I'm not going to read out all these. I'm sure most of this you already know, but this is just to put it in a succinct manner to show qualitative differences between the two. Let's go to the next one again. A very common question in comparison context is Skype versus Teams because both are Microsoft products. Many customers happen to have both installed. Now IT is struggling to tell you please use Teams and people are happy using Skype. Now those for those who are using Skype, this will be very important. For example, in Skype searching for past chat is very irritating and difficult, whereas in Teams all the search is within it. Even if you don't remember whether you have chatted with someone, you just type the name. Teams will find the chat and append to that. That's a very nice feature. And of course, all other things I'm not going to read out, but they are obvious and they are distinct advantages of Teams chat versus Skype for business chat. In fact, if you have never tried Teams chat and you are happy with Skype, just try it a couple of times and then you will never go back. In fact, if you have a group of people, one click gives you a conference call. You don't care. Even in WhatsApp, you have to touch individual name. You don't need to do this here and the call quality is good. Having said that in today, uh, in today's world because of the virus situation and many people working from home, all remote conferencing software has scalability issue, including teams, but by and large, it's much better quality. So now let's come to non ad hoc or long term context with common objectives. If that is the case, it's structured work. I'm not saying send a file and forget about it. It's about a common objective, a new initiative or a project. So in that context, whether it is urgent or not urgent, we can't use chat and we can't use email. What happens if you use email? In fact, today if there is a new project starting, this is how we do the teamwork. Let's say we have a project. 15% team formed three months project. Multiple departments, multiple departments and locations as well. Now these people are not meeting each other every day, but there is a project plan. Someone is uh, 
executing some task, someone else is executing some other task. They are interdependent, so everyone needs to know what is happening. Now the question is, how do you keep everyone in sync? The only method we know today is send a mail. So I'm going to send a daily mail to all these 14 people, 14 people in CC. What are the other 14 people doing? They are also attempting to do the same thing. So let's do a simple calculation. 14 multiplied by 14, three months and 18 working days. What are we talking about? It's a large number. These many mails you are going to get and what is going to happen? You are just drowning in mails. This is just for one project. Communication, files coming as attachments. You are getting too many mails and even those mails are in not correct order. They are all scattered. Not only that, typically we are a part of multiple projects. So whatever I showed just now was just one project, by the way. This is one project. I get a lot of mails from that. There's another project. I get even more mails. There's a third one. I get even more mails. Plus I get my regular email as well. So literally we are drowning in email. Obviously this is not efficient. I don't need to be there to tell you this is inefficient. You know at heart this is inefficient but we are still doing it because we got used to it. So multiple projects, information getting all mixed up in one dumping ground called inbox. That's the problem statement. So what do we do? We don't use email for project specific communication, and that's where team comes into picture because inbox seems to be our enemy. In this case, the famous dialogue is why are you so busy? Because you are struggling to create a PPT for tomorrow's project review meeting. The meeting is 30 minutes, but you are searching in Outlook for four hours. That is a waste of life. So don't do that. What we really need is for each project, we need a separate place where all these things related to the project can be put quietly and nicely without any searching. And that is why Teams was created. So Teams is basically a container. So that's what I mean, structured, long term work where multiple people are involved and they have a common objective to achieve that sometimes we call a project, but it need not be a formal project as well. Long term context, same team, common objective. That means you use teams and notice what I'm showing you here. This is for ad hoc work. This is for structured work, unstructured, structured. That is why teams is important. There are separate products for structured, separate for unstructured. Here is one product for both. That's the idea. So now how do we structure the structured work? You create a team for each project. What does a team contain? It contains channels. So let me give you some examples and channels contain tabs. As we go along, you will understand. So I have a team by default general channel gets created. There you can discuss and you can also upload files. These files are not uploaded to OneDrive. There is a separate storage for teams. It doesn't interfere with anybody's OneDrive. And then you add as many channels as required. For example, in a new product launch, general channel is always going to be there, but I have two channels planning, sorry, and execution. Similarly, in the recruitment, I have two positions open, VP Finance, VP Marketing, separate channels. By the way, if you are asking for resumes separately for VP Marketing and VP Finance, you get a unique email ID by channel so you can automatically get the responses to your emails directly landing into the channel as well. Another example, monthly review. It's not a project, but it is a long term thing. Same people are working, common objective. So channel becomes each month's meeting and like that. For example, audit branch audit separate, regional audit separate and audit findings separate. So that is how you structure your teams. How do you create a team? Just go to teams create a team and add people to it. You should be able to add external consultants, parties, procurement, suppliers, whatever. If anybody from IT is here, please don't block it because by adding this collaboration is becoming simpler and efficient. So it's a good thing to allow people to add external parties. So having done this, some of the channels I may want to protect. For example, this team called audit has been created by auditors. Now all the branch manager and regional managers have access to teams. So by default, everything which goes on in a channel is visible and editable by every team member. But in this case, 
audit findings, I don't want anybody to know. So I create a private channel so you can customize the visibility of the channel to a subset of people. So all these three channels, everyone has access. Audit findings, only auditors have access. Like that, you can fine grain the security aspect. Now Teams is basically a container. You put whatever you want in it. Teams doesn't do Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Team doesn't do reports. It just gives you a place to accumulate everything you want. So posts is for discussion, files is for files, but you can put OneNote, you can put Planner. That plus sign is the most important one. When you click that, it actually integrates with 200 plus different things. I'm not showing you the entire list, many, many third party products. Just scroll through that list and you will be surprised some of the products you're using may already be there. So just add what you need and start working. The basic design principle of Teams is to eliminate context switching. The moment you switch context, coming back becomes difficult. You may get lost and never come back. So that decreases focus. Team is designed to increase your focus. So bottom line, nothing is going to inbox. What happens in Teams stays in Teams. That's the whole idea. Now what about tasks? Tasks should not be just put as Excel files in the files area of Teams. Where should they be put? There is planner for that purpose. So planner can be added to Teams as a tab. So this is conversations. This is files. This is a planner tab. In the planner tab, you can have multiple buckets like this. If you are doing say agile, this could be backlog. This could be sprint one, sprint two. You can also group it like a Kanban board by saying I want not started in progress and completed. And you can also see a nice graphical view. All this is available to everyone live, even on their mobile. So probably using teams like this for ongoing projects eliminates unwanted stupid meetings. And that time can be invested in something which is more value adding. Now, if you have multiple projects, you will have multiple plans. So how do I know my work across plans? That has also been thought of. That is called planner tab. In that you can see my tasks. And if you go to the online version of it, you can actually add these into your Outlook calendar as well and synchronize with it. So planner, my tasks. If you are not explored, try that. Of course, all this works beautifully on mobile. Everything I'm showing and talking about works on mobile. So you need three mobile apps if you want to utilize this properly. What are the apps? One is of course Teams. The other one is Planner, which will show you all the plans because Planner can have plans independent of Teams as well. And finally, To Do, which gives me my tasks, which are coming from Outlook, Planner tasks, which are coming from Plan, and my tasks from projects as assigned to me. So this is a unification of my tasks plus project tasks. So all three apps you use the way you want. Now when it comes to meetings, meetings can happen in channels. They can happen independently. And the most important part is you record the meeting and unlike Skype, the recording quality is very nice. The meeting recording automatically gets saved to stream. And most importantly, other people who did not attend the meeting can refer to it without confusion. The best feature I like here is minutes of meeting. Once the meeting is uploaded, it automatically transcribes it. So you don't really have to waste time typing everything. And if there is a dispute, you can actually search it and it'll give you a timestamp exactly at the point in time where that word was uttered. Very, very useful. Finally, what I'm currently doing is a live streaming session. It's called live events. So you go to Teams calendar, not new meeting, open the drop down, then there is live event. That works a little differently. Typically in a meeting, there is a presenter and there is an attendee. Here there is a third role called producer who doesn't present because there could be multiple presenters. Let's say CEO and CFO are going to talk from their house. Today, that is the situation. Everyone is working for the house. How does a CXO communicate with thousands of employees? That's a genuine requirement. So what happens? You. So I'm actually going to show you a screenshot. So there are multiple presenters here sitting in their own places and there is a producer. This is a screen which the producer sees. On the left side, producer decides what should be sent to live. And when I choose, okay, this presenter should go here. Then I say send live 
and then it is shown live. So multiple presenters sitting in multiple locations, no special software or hardware required, just a simple webcam and fairly steady bandwidth is all that is required. What is required at the attendee side? Nothing. Just click on the link, a browser and internet. That's all that is required. You can see it on. You can see it on uh, uh, mobile phone as well. And by default, the recording is automatically uploaded and the same link which you use for the purpose of attending the session later on becomes a link for recording. So no special effort. I am not doing that because I need to edit my video. I will post the link and I'll show you the link later. So that is about live streaming. If you have not tried it, please try it. Those who are trying it, don't do a rehearsal on the live meeting because once you send the stream live, there is no pause. So if you are doing a rehearsal, create a dummy live event and do it. Otherwise you'll be stuck. Finally, I'm not going to discuss in detail, but as I mentioned, this is a corporate software, so all kinds of security and governance is built in like it is a part of Office 365. Every Office 365 product has to have this, so that is the benefit of integration and maturity of the platform you're getting while getting the convenience of a chat software and collaboration software. So that is what I mean. Don't do isolated comparisons product specific. Do it at a platform level and then you will be able to utilize it better and you will be able to promote it better in your organization. The last thing, if you are excited about it, suddenly you create a team and add random people to it. It's not going to work. You will have to teach the benefits of using team like I have told you to people whom you intend to put as people in your team. So having said that, show them this video or you do a mini session for them. Only when everyone is on the same page, Teams is going to work. Otherwise, you put a message in Teams, nobody is looking at it. You have to send CC with 14 people, defeats the purpose. So finally, the diagram which shows you which product to use when. Yesterday we did Outlook. So as I said yesterday, Outlook should be used less and the individual relevant product should be used for the relevant purpose. So this is the hierarchy. Tomorrow we'll cover Yama. Yeah, this is called Kaizala, which is merging into Teams, so I'm not going to cover. And project is not a part of Office 365. So as a part of this series of webinars, I don't intend to cover it. So I guess that's all we have right now. I did overrun a little. Apologies for that, but now we can take questions. Uh, Ankit has a question. I yeah. am a CA and I had a recurring task with 100 odd clients every month for filling yeah. of GST returns. Mm. I require only watch with a simple checkbox style follow up that at the end of the day, how many returns are pending? OK, so if there is a recurring task. For each customer, if you have a recurring task, then that can happen in task folder itself. But I am assuming there is one task which says 100 returns, in which case there has to be a mechanism for noting down which customer has finished it, which customer has not finished it. So you'll have to either do programming or use a combination of Excel, task and Power Automate. But it's a custom kind of application to be developed. There, I don't think there is a direct out of the box product. There may be a third party product which I'm not aware of, but at least in Microsoft context, this will require extra work. The next question I think you have covered, but it says uh, do compare the utility of the different apps, Skype, Zoom and Teams. Yeah, so most of it I've covered. Zoom is really popular. I also use it. I have found there is a difference in the way Zoom works and Teams works. So whichever works for you, use it. That's what I would say. But the corporate uh, governance, security, DLP, all those things you can't expect from a consumer product. But in today's situation, the constraints are different. It is about what bandwidth you have at home. What is the familiarity other people have with tools? So it's not a hard and fast rule. Whatever works for you, use it. All I try to do is give you a balanced picture. Now that you know this side of the story, finally it's your discretion. Next question. 
Praveen is asking, how do we utilize teams for doing an organization wide communication covering 700 employees across India? All the participants are working from home, so there must be dependency on the individual bandwidth available. Yes, so that's what I said. Uh, teams live events is one of the options. Other options is Zoom live events. The other option is use Twitch or use uh, YouTube live, Facebook live and various other things. Conceptual, all of them work similar in a similar manner. Um, the teams is what I'm using right now. So if you have at least the presenter and the producer should have good bandwidth. If people at remote sites or the attendees have less bandwidth, then because it is streaming, it adjusts to individual bandwidth and it will delay the stream accordingly. So if I'm speaking right now, probably you are listening to it. Someone is listening to it 10 seconds later. Someone is listening and seeing it 20 seconds later or one minute later. But whatever they are seeing and hearing is synchronized. So the last mile is automatically taken care of. That's the whole idea of streaming. Next question. Yeah. Can we directly navigate or search topic in recordings as in OneNote to listen to specific topic of meeting? Yes, absolutely. So that is exactly what I said. When you record a meeting in Teams, the video gets uploaded to stream. And after uploading the video, if you set the language to English or one of the six supported language, then it will automatically transcribe it and that transcript is searchable. So you can actually say discount in a three hour meeting search for when was the word discount uttered maybe six times. You can actually jump to those places in the video. Uh, the next question was asking for a specific link for the recorded session which has been provided. Uh, this is not the link. This link is for the session. This is link for my. Blog articles, the link for the recording I will mention just after this. Uh, the next question is by Janaka. Uh, can you show how we separating documents in the same team? Just you saw audit slide. Uh, I don't get the question. I think it means how to create a private channel. OK. This is a team. These are channels. Now I want to create a private channel. What do I do? I go here. I click on add channel, give a name to the channel. And here instead of standard, which means accessible to everyone, I choose private and then I can add a subset of people who have to be members of the team already. That is how you create a private channel. Next question is Mehul asking if teams for education is different. Yes, teams for education is a different skew and has some other features as well. Yes. Next question is asking. Can you have different people in different channels in bracket? All of them would be part of the team. So that's what I said. When you create a team, you create a set of people who are team members. For a specific channel, if you want a subset of people, you have to make it as a private channel. If you want to keep it as a standard non private channel, then you cannot do subset of people. If you really want to do that, then you say open in SharePoint and uh, try to do SharePoint security, but try to avoid that because SharePoint security is a complex topic. And even if you understand that topic, everyone doesn't, so it becomes a maintenance overhead. The next question is asking, can multiple login be done on the same Microsoft Teams setup like we can do in Outlook? Multiple logins not at the same time, so you can have multiple tenants configured in a single Teams client, but at a given point of time, you can actively use only one tenant. So I'm a, I do consulting for so many customers and I also provide help desk for their adoption. So many customers are a part of my teams, but let's say I am talking to Toyota in my teams app, then I can't look at my own messages of my own organization. I have to switch 
organizations to do that. Next question is by Mehul again. Which is better for teaching Excel online if only audio, video and screen sharing is concerned? Teams or Zoom? I guess uh, any software will work. There is nothing special in this requirement. Basically, I'm talking about one application, audio and video, so anything which supports that should do. But if it is a corporate training and then you want to record this and use it as a corporate content for future reuse, then Teams makes sense because I don't know any other tool which will do automatic transcript. Automatically, I mean, with manual effort, everything can be done. The next question is, what can be done to invite outside organization user? So, a better way of asking that question is what should not be done because by default external sharing is enabled, but most IT people for some unknown reason disable external sharing for OneDrive, SharePoint and Teams. They think that is increasing security, but it is not because if you disable external sharing, people in the organization still have to communicate with external parties, so they will use email attachments. They will use some third party random cloud software some uh, cloud storage, which is anyway non audited and not checked for security. So it evolves shadow IT better to have. External sharing enabled with governance rather than block it. Next question is by Mehul again. What if I don't want to share video recording with the team members? Uh, I'm assuming we are talking about uh, the meeting. OK, there are two ways to answer this question. One could be the meeting recording. So if you record the meeting and you are the organizer of the meeting, then it gets. You can go to stream and change the security if you have the rights to do so. In case of a live event, when you are organizing the live event, you can disable the ability of. Attendees to view the recording. Next question is by Jairam. Mm -hmm. Would transcription be available for audio calls as well on Teams? No, because stream does not accept audio as of now. So if worst case you have an audio only call, there is nobody on video, no screen sharing and you still want transcript, just record the meeting. The screen will be blank, but because it's a video transcript will come. Manmohan has the question next. Why don't you add screen sharing with full admin privilege option for remote users? They can access their system and troubleshoot end user. Yeah, but then we are talking about a remote uh, troubleshooting kind of software. There are hundreds of such software applications available. If your primary scenario or objective is remote troubleshooting, Teams is not designed for remote troubleshooting, although you can share a screen and give control to a third party. So typically the Teams give control kind of thing can be used for troubleshooting, but it's an overkill I would say because Teams has so much extra code which is for other things. But there is a genuine scenario. You are doing a online training and then you are teaching something. People are doing hands on. Someone has a problem. Then that person sharing screen and the trainer taking control makes sense. So that's kind of a training oriented troubleshooting. But for a help desk or an IT team which gives support, using Teams as the default mechanism for purely remote support is an overkill, I would say. Next question is, can we use Microsoft Planner as Microsoft Project and how to get NatChart in the planner? So that's the whole idea. Planner is not for linked tasks. It's not really a project management tool in the true sense of the word. So if you want a Gantt chart, that means tasks are linked and tasks are linked using different relationship. First one ends, then the next one start or both start together or is there a lead time or a lag time? How much duration? How many resources are allocated? So all that is project management that requires 
MS project or any other formal project management tool. Planner is not designed for that. No linkages, no Gantt charts. Mehul is asking, I am a freelance trainer. Can I get teams for education? Yeah, I guess so. I think as of now, teams is free for everyone. Next, Niran is asking, can we use Microsoft Planner as Microsoft Project and how to get Gantt chart in the plan? Okay, it's the same question again. Uh, then Mehul is asking, close caption and transcript is not there while viewing video. Yeah, so if you are, I'm assuming the video is on screen, so if closed caption and transcript is not there, you have to edit the video settings and set the language to English. Only when you set the language, the transcript gets created automatically. By default, the language is not set. That is why there is a problem. Mehul is asking, I know that if I share PPT, attendee can also go back and forward to the slides and they can also save the PPT, which I don't want. Is there a solution? Can you repeat the question? Sorry. Mehul is asking, if I share a PPT, attendees can go back and forward to the slides. They yes. can also save the PPT, which I don't want. Is there a solution? Yeah, so here I'm talking, uh, you're talking about a Teams meeting. So Teams meeting when you have, running there is an option do you want to allow the audience to skip ahead i can't show you that option because i am in a live session right now so just join a random meeting on the right side pane there is an option do you want attendees to skip ahead and if you are sharing your screen as ppt there is no way they will be able to download the file because there is no file you are just sharing the screen manmohan is asking next in Teams, guest users can upload and download files. In Teams, if you added guest users, yes, they can upload, download files, and that if you want to control, then you have to use conditional access. So when you add a guest user to Teams, they essentially get registered in Active Directory. So in that, you can control that if it's a guest user, if it is not a registered machine, if it is an unknown IP, all kinds of conditions are available allow only browser based viewing, don't allow download. That kind of thing is possible. Janaka is asking how Teams authorization works. Adding members, can members add new members? So there is nothing like authorization. You can add members. If it's a member from the same domain, it will get added. If it's a member outside the domain, you just put guest in brackets. Guess have uh, limited functionality, means lesser functionality than a regular member. But there are only two categories. Owner, which has the ability to add more people and remove people. Member, who can't do that, but then have read write access to everything. And guest, who also has read write access to everything, but some limited features. Next, Mehul is asking, can we call from Teams to a mobile phone? Uh, that depends on which country you are in, not in India. So Teams comes with a voice and uh, voice or as we call it, external uh, phone system integration, but I think in India there is a limitation on that. Just check with your local Microsoft team. They will be able to guide you on exactly what is available and what is not. Mehul is asking, where is organization chart option? Okay, let me try to show you that. Hold on. Okay, I'm bringing teams here. So you go to chat and what do you do? You go and search for any person's name or if you already see the name, just hover on the name. And then what happens? It will show you different options. So look at the options. This is chat. You can just send a quick message from here itself. This is email. This is organization chart. 
And if you are already chatting, there is an organization tab as well. Now, of course, this is my tenant. I have very few people in the company, so this is just a dummy org chart. But in a complex organization, assuming the Active Directory manager field is properly populated, which in many cases is not, then you will see a proper org chart. It's interactive, live, automatically drawn. Aditya is asking the next question. Yeah. Does streams require a separate license to do a live event? Uh, no, streams does not require a separate license as long as you have Office 365 even upwards. I think you have the license and live event can be invoked from three places. One is Teams, which I talked to you about. One is Yammer and third is Stream itself. Behind the scenes, all three of them behind the scenes use the stream infrastructure anyway. But depending on where you invoke the event, some features are missing, some features are there. So just go to the documentation and see the comparison. If you could open your Q&A and read the detailed explanation that Mehul has given, then the next question would be a little easier for you to understand. OK, let me see that. Just give me a second. It was posted at 7.39 p.m. I don't know if Business Essentials has stream. I'll have to check. He has posted a couple of mess, uh, messages before that. A little longer one. Ah. And I share only the Excel application. Yes. OK. I write a formula in Excel which is equal to whatever. Yes, so. If you open. If you type equal to and type something in Excel, it shows you a list of those things. Those are separate windows and when you say share a particular window, that window is not a part of it. So in that case, you'll have to share a desktop. That is correct. I don't see any reason uh, any other way of doing that. It's not only Excel in many applications, secondary windows open and those windows will not be visible if you share. Uh, uh, if a new window opens as a part of the application window which you have shared. Same thing happens with PowerPoint. If you are running a PowerPoint presentation and you share the presentation window and then you stop or start another presentation, it may get confusing. The next question mm -hmm. is, are you going to teach teams for education as e-learning to challenge for both the teachers and the student? Uh, there is a lot of content already, but let me see if I get a lot of requests. We can definitely think of that in future. Next question is by Niran, who's asking how to use whiteboard in Teams meeting when I'm using Teams on iPad or iPhone. So I, to my knowledge, I for the application is available on iPhone or not. I don't know, but at least on desktop it is OK. I, uh, when you say share screen, it gives you three options. One is desktop, one is Windows. It also gives you specific PowerPoint presentations if you want. And fourth option is whiteboard. Whiteboard is sort of an add in, but it's written by Microsoft itself. So you have to check whether it's available on iPad or iPhone and then you can use it. Ideally for using whiteboard properly, whoever is using it should have a stylus or a link kind of thing, but you can still use fingers as a sketching mechanism. Next. Next question is by Arun. What is the difference between lives event and organization wide team? So live event is what we are doing right now. There is a time there is someone sitting live and doing audio video screen sharing and people have to be logged in using the attendee link. Organization wide team has nothing live. It's just that all people who are a part of Active Directory automatically are part of the team. 
So it's like you create a team and instead of adding everyone's name, everyone's name is already there. So org wide teams are typically used as a help desk or as a notice board or stuff like that. General employee communication. That's nothing live there. Basant is asking, sorry if I missed. Can you show the guest user or outside user or outside people how to add? There is no special method. The exactly the same way you add, put the full email ID and press enter. That's all. It will automatically detect that this person is not a part of your domain and identify it as guest and the role assigned to that person will be guest and next to the name also in brackets you will see the word guest and just to make sure that everyone in the team understands that there are guests one or more and the top right corner you will always keep seeing guests as a word there so you are conscious not to put anything which you don't want guests to see. Niran is saying as a follow up from his previous question. I can't see whiteboard during team meeting when I'm using teams with my iPad. Yeah, so probably that feature is not implemented. Babu is asking, is there any limit for adding the number of participants in a meeting? Like 250. Unless it has changed recently and for live event. The number of participants who are viewers only participants is 10,000. Manmohan is asking in Skype for business meetings, mm -hmm. presenter can unmute users mic, but in teams presenter not able to do that. Uh, yes, I know technically it is possible, but from a legal point of view, that's a privacy intrusion, so that feature was intentionally removed to my knowledge. Next question is by Arun. When doing a screen share, it only shows PowerPoint. How can I share Excel files if I want to share just the app? Sure, so when you go to screen share, it shows you desktop and then it shows you all the windows which are open. You may have to scroll down. That's all. Every window is potentially shareable, not even any window, any application, not necessarily only Microsoft application. Not only that, if you have multiple monitors, you can also choose which monitor you want to share. Yeah, can I ahead. use Teams as a customer service? Yes, technically you can use Teams as uh, customer support. Uh, you can add the customer as a guest and then use all the features of Teams. But there are dedicated products available which are more tuned towards that. Basant is asking, is it possible to turn on the voice of the attendee? Say now if I'm able to speak to you directly. <coughs> so that's what I said as a presenter. You can mute all, but you cannot unmute someone because whether to unmute someone is that person's right, not your right. So legally and a privacy point of view, that's not allowed now. Mehul is asking, is there any way to add multiple guests import? Uh, I think yes, there is a partial way of doing that. Yes, everything which is so possible from the UI is possible through programming and partial. Yes. Arun is asking. Can I also choose from multiple desktops on Mac OS? Multiple desktops on Mac OS, I'm not very sure. I'll have to check that. Yeah. And James is asking, can I take a backup of chat? Backup of chat is automatically done like email is archived on Exchange server. All chat in Teams is automatically backed up, so you can go to the e-discovery center and search for chats across the organization. Of course, you need admin rights to that and the end user can't do that. The idea is this whatever is happening in teams like whatever is happening in a corporate email chat is official communication. So in case there is a dispute is in case there is a complaint in case there is a legal problem, it needs to be searchable. So obviously it is completely archived and fully searchable. All right, so this is the link where the video will be available. I have written many blog articles as well. They are available here. This is the link.
or you can go to my blog, which is called efficiency365.com. And finally, I want to thank Shesham, Anindo and Zeus who have been working with me to make this series of events possible. So thank you everyone for joining. That's it for now.